they are technically horizontal, but they're being distorted by the lens. And so those will start to go to a left vanishing point and a right vanishing point. And that will set you up for basically one vanishing point on center, and then another one below, another one above. So that's two, three, then four, five. So it's technically a five point uh, perspective because you can see here's my vanishing point, and that would be like my lens center. And when I set up these grids, I'm just sort of cropping and I'm drawing down here in this part of my grid. Because technically, your lens needs to be centered on the vanishing point in order to have the converging lines remain straight and also not distort. Okay, so I'm going to start with the front wheel. Draw back. I usually just do a little bit of convergence, so just tilting up the line just a little bit. Draw the center line for the axle. Vertical, it really I put in a vertical for the front wheel just to help me guess at the angle for the fork. Um, and usually when I draw back in space like this to estimate the rear wheel, I sort of do little tick marks and then I just guess at the foreshortening. So there's one wheel, so I just make it a little bit less. But when you're drawing with a flat perspective like this, it can be almost the same dimension, which makes it a little bit easier at guessing. So if I want one and a half for wheelbase, it would be about like that. And then I might say, well, there's the height of the front wheel, and I want my rear wheel to be a little bit taller. So that's kind of all you need. And you draw the same sort of degree, maybe a little bit less. But in a flat perspective, I, you could just make those the same, to be honest. Um, my minor axis for this is a little bit higher because it's a little bit taller. Okay. Now we need to put in the same things we had before. So this is just going to be my centerline plane turned from side view into perspective. So this is like a three-quarter view because that's kind of a 45 degree ellipse, which means we're looking at the bike. Here's our top view. I've only just drawn the wheels. One and a half. There's my centerline for the wheels. And we're looking kind of like this in top view at like a 45 degree angle. Okay. Now, let's add in the rest of it. So I'm going to say my foot pegs go there um, on center line. Then my saddle, something like this, just ahead of the rear wheel. And you'll see I'm foreshortening it a little bit. Now, that just comes from experience. If you really want to measure that, what you need to do is go back to your side view. Okay and find where the end of the saddle is relative to the wheel. So if that's the center line of the wheel, there's the front. Let's see, it's a little bit ahead of a quarter. All right, so here's a, here's a quarter point on the overall wheel. So I'm gonna say it's a little bit ahead of that, and then where does this one end? It's kind of right above the foot peg, which is like another quarter ahead. So if you wanted help in foreshortening this curve in perspective, you take a, more dimensions in side view. There's the fork extension coming down to the axle. So my axle is here, right on the minor axis of my lips. And I'm adding the width. You can add it on both sides if you want, but you don't really need to. We can now just start drawing on this near side that we see. OK, putting a little extension here. There's the axle. There's an end part here that bolts on to the end of this fork extension. This is going to hold the axle, and it's going to hold the brake caliper. Okay, You can put it riding behind, you can put it riding in front, your choice. Now what you want to do is set the width of the front axle, and then you want to go in a little bit for the brake caliper. Here's the center, so we have brake calipers both sides. Okay, That's where they would sit in space off of center line. And then we have the uh, wheel itself. So if I draw up here, let's draw down to the ground so it's going to be a little bit easier to see. There's the ground line. Okay, now I want to start adding some sections and drop in some ellipses. Okay, so I'm going to grab my ellipse guides. Here I did grab my big template after all so I can 
keep this trolling large. Um, typically I draw small because it's easier to carry around the small ellipse guides, to be honest. Um, it's one of the reasons. So there's my minor axis. So I'm going to line up my ellipse guide. And let's see, there's pretty much going to be right about there. So it's going to be my center. So I'm going to just lightly draw the center line, like so. And then I'm going to draw the position using the same 45 degree ellipse. I'm going to draw the position of my disc brakes. So that's my center line of the wheel. Um, well, let's draw the inside of the rim first. So if you want to draw a section first, you could do that. You could say, okay, well, I want the front wheel to be how wide? Well, it's got to fit inside the forks, right? So it can't be too wide. It could be a little bit wider than the uh, disc brakes can sit inside that. So say, well, there's my width for the rim. And then here's my section line. I'm just going to do something like this for the tire. And it's going to notch in a little bit for the sidewall. And then we're going to have the section like this. So there's the line I see for the sidewall step. There's the rim step. There's the center line. So one section. And then I can place my ellipse guide. 45 degree again, and I could say, well, that means my disc brake is going to be somewhere about there. So let's find the height of that. So keep your minor axis lined up on your ellipse guide. Find the right height. Once you have the height you want, then you have to position in and out. Okay, what you have to do is slide your ellipse along the minor axis, and that's moving it like here, it would be on center line. Okay, and then if I move it out, now it's coming out towards the fork, but I want to stop before I run into the fork. So right about there, and there's, I have my vertical line there as a guide to position it. So there's going to be my disc brake. If you want, you could add a little thickness to it even. Sorry, yeah, so there's the disc. Now if you quick sketch it, which I'll try to put one on the end of this tutorial, um, you just indicate those things, but you have this in your mind when you're doing your indication. So I think that's about it for this view. Let's, uh, I think we'll move on to a side view tip up and that'll wrap up this tutorial. So let's first get a vanishing point on here and some guidelines. Always hard to draw straight lines without moving around the pad, but I'll try to do that. It makes it a little better, I think, for the for the demo. Okay, I'm going to put in a wheel here. So now I, I have this guideline. That's my minor axis. Okay, maybe I could start with it. Let's start with a ground line first. Remember, right here, this can have a little bit of a curvilinear perspective to it. So straight down, here's my horizon up here. So 90 degrees to that, straight down is vertical. And then I'm going to have distortion away like this. Right? And I'm only drawing in it's sort of a cropped version of my camera being centered here, but we're drawing sort of in the lower right corner of a of a frame. All right. And I want to be pretty close to the eye level of my saddle being right up in here somewhere. So you might even with a light marker say, so, okay, I'm going to have a saddle in here somewhere. You know, you could give yourself a little guide for where you think you want to fit the sketch on the page. Um, I'm going to start really again with the wheels. And so there's the minor axis. And so I draw an ellipse on there using this minor axis. That'll be the center line. Here it is touching the ground. And it's going to distort a little bit towards a right vanishing point like that for the front wheel. Okay, so now I want to take, and again, my vertical is also going to start to bend and converge downward a little bit. Again, 90 when it hits the horizon, but bending down below the image. So something about like that. And now I want to get my wheelbase set. So I'm just going to multiply. So that's one, two, and a little bit. 
sorry, one for the, the wheelbase gap, but it's two total wheels, a little bit here. So there's the back of the front wheel. Well, I want it to be a little bit smaller. So come in here, pick out the height and go forward a little bit less. So there's my wheel. It's going to hit tangent here, tangent there, tangent there, and has to have its minor axis going back here. So something like that. So that ellipse, it's going to look something like that. Let's just do a simple brake line through here. We'll keep this one a little bit minimal. I'm going to say that this comes out. It's got a little bit of a flat through here. So I'm going to put a double line coming off of that. A few extra lines. That looks like a big, like a radius tapering into the base of the seat. Okay. And then across the top, a little bit of curvature. And then maybe it's got a little bit of a hollow out to that. Something like that would be the section. Turn, roll down, maybe blends into there. This could also stick out a bit. So now you can start kind of subtle pushing and pulling on that side. Maybe I will revisit the hole. Let's put one, let's put one right into here. cut just below that radius. Okay, what about the far side? Well, it's, I can leave it narrow up there, just not like I need a lot of stuff up there if I have a big hub motor. So let's just draw from the vanishing point. A little bit of curvature, there's the far side of the hole. Getting a little wider at the front and maybe tapering a little bit here towards the saddle. So just to keep things simple, let's just leave it at that. Maybe to show it uh, a little more obvious, I'll use crosshatch in the direction of the vanishing point. That reinforces it like little section lines that are cutting through on a material change. So there's a hole this arches up and over. I will include some of these that I've already scanned and give you some nice high resolution versions of those to look at me doing the exact same process, but basically only drawing for myself, not trying to talk at the same time. So I get a little bit higher quality, um, but it's the same exact process that I've just shown you here. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed it. And uh, I will do these whenever I have a little window of time. So just keep following the Gumroad channel and um, they'll pop up whenever they uh, can. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.